Nirmala Sitaraman of the BJP Swapan Das Gupta senior journalist Gagan Sethi has been with the NSE in the past he's from Ahmedabad chairperson of the Jan Vikas and Center for Social Justice Vinod Mehta editorial chairman of Outlook Kamal Faruqi uh, national secretary of the Samajwadi party my first question is to Swaminathan Iyer who joins me in the studio uh, Swami do you think Aruna Roy has uh, resigned because there is a growing divide between the Congress party and the government in a pre-election year. No, no. No, all you don't think so? All that's happened was that for a long time, for three years, Aruna Roy had Sonia's year and Manmohan didn't. No, she doesn't have Sonia's year now. She doesn't have it now. Why do, you, she's, why she's, do you say she she's doesn't She's interpreting have it now? herself as being with the, with the people. The truth is she's putting forward this growth versus poverty debate, yeah. which is an old, sterile and completely bogus one. We went through the Garibi Hatao phase. When they suppose growth didn't matter, only Garibi Hatao matter, all those programs. Yeah. I'm sorry, the number of poor people doubled. We've had the fastest growth of poverty reduction between 2004-2009 when taken. the growth was fastest. No, all I'm saying is she's coming out with the same old left-wing nostrums which are simply untrue. The truth is that Sonia Gandhi did listen to her for three years yeah. and she can't stand the fact that Sonia Gandhi is not listening to her. To say that you're the saying, government... You're people like Aruna Roy have become uh, maybe uh, intellectually... In, in, intellectual, in megalomania. And sir, she's, look, she had a very clear idea that they are the saviors of the country. I would argue the policies they are following are very bad. I would argue the policies they are following, far from saving people, will worsen the situation. In the last two years, economic growth has fallen to almost yes, half yes. the rate. For her to say the government is obsessed with growth, yeah. I feel like laughing aloud. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I can't I, see uh, any facts. You see, it's the, the other way around. You see, because the government was obsessed the, with the kind of schemes Aruna Roy had yes, in mind. Yes. Therefore, growth got neglected. We got to a situation where there was virtually a downgrade. Yes. Suddenly, the Congress realizes you are going to lose the election unless you change. No, but who created this structure? Let's get Swapan Das Gupta in. Who created the structure? This, you know, you are saying no political overturn, Swami Nathanayar. You know, I, I, I beg to disagree. The fact of the matter is the NSC is headed by Sonia Gandhi. There are obvious and direct political overtones to this group. There's a, there, there has been questions of a conflict of interest in the past. And this group has been unable to run over the government in the last year before the elections. Swapan Das Gupta, does this prove, Mr. Das Gupta, that this whole dual power center theory is now beginning to go horribly wrong? No, no, I don't think it proves that. I think it's, it's got a lot to do with the temperament, the personality and the orientation of those who constitute members of the NAC and what they see are their priorities and the importance which they attach to themselves. Now, I think here was a classic case. I think Aruna Roy, in the brief snatches of the interview I managed to hear, uh, yes. which you did with her, yes. was quite clear that it was an advisory council. Now we have business advisory council, we have a national security advisory board, we have various things. None of those people, to my mind, fly off the handle. None of those people make a public proclamation that you know, the, you know, a small minority is somehow influencing the government, etc. What I think here was a case of some individuals who believe that what they say actually must make up policy. And there I agree with Swami. They have arrogated to themselves the role and the voice of the people. So they equate themselves to the real voice of what India is about. But they have been allowed to, Mr. Das Gupta. That they've been, they've fundamental, been implicit, implicit arrogance. Of course they've been allowed. I remember a case. Because they were fulfilling a certain agenda. No, how they have they stopped fulfilling that agenda, agenda now, Mr. This das Gupta? Agenda, no, they are, they are fulfilling the agenda because the, bloody, because the economy is no longer able to sustain ah, such an so agenda. So the party is over. It's a simple question as that. So it's the, a question, if, if the party is over, you are likely to get in the next quarter a growth rate which is likely to come down below five. In that sort of a situation of profligate spending, 
NREGA, you're not concerned about what the leakages are. No, you're but not then, concerned then, about I, I understand. One, I, no, no. one size fits all. Is M Mr. Mr. You, want, you want more, 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 and you go on. No, no, Mr. And, you, and you've not only gone in for social agenda, you've I, gone in for things like the communal I, violence, yeah, yeah. which actually segregates two types of people. No, no. So you decide that you are the parliament. No, no, Mr. Das. And are, she in her letter. But Mr. Asked, das Gupta. No, no, she in her letter says it's been needlessly delayed. Yes. But Mr. Das Gupta, however, 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 yeah. I, 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 by the way, Mr. Das Gupta, uh, uh, you know, you and Swaminathan Nair have perfectly laid the tone of the debate. But I, I beg to disagree with both of you. Because what you're forgetting, and I want to get our third panelist is this, that this is political. And, and, and I remember Manishankar Ayer's comment where he said the NAC will court, court institutionalize. No, 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 no. Just what I'm political. saying is, no, no, because you did, you, 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 you said no or no, but I don't agree with this business of dual power centers. My view is that Manishankar no, Ayer said. But you the, play, you're, you're saying. I'm looking at it through a prism, Mr. Dasko. That's all. I'm, not, I, I'm, not I'm looking at it through boil the prism. Down to a Sonia Gandhi versus Manmohan. No, 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 no. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I, I'm not. I'm not naive enough to do that. What I'm saying is, Manishankar Ayer said, and he said, I quote, the NAC will institutionalize the party's influence over the government. That is what he had said. So yeah, it indicated but, but, what the Congress president but could the not do. Ayer has said the other thing. Yeah, so, no, th therefore, I, it's right of me to ask that today Aruna Roy, who was seen to be the mascot of this, uh, you know, the, the pa pa hold the pa party has over the government, has resigned. It's a big development. A and therefore, the question is this whole dual power center yeah. is falling apart. One person who backs the idea of an NAC is joining me. Gagan Sethi is joining me from Ahmedabad. On this, the whole NSC is falling apart, Gagan Sethi, not just Aruna Roy. The whole structure is falling apart, no, isn't no, it? I, I, it's, 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 I think it's the, this is the problem of the UPA government where it has been showing a schizophrenia uh -huh. of one on one hand wanting to develop and strengthen grassroots democracy, on the other hand being controlled and led by whiz kids who want to manage economies and and run the governance through through Wizkid methods. Which Wizkid? I think this is the largest schism that is there in the country and is represented in the way the whole system functions. I want to make a correction. I have not been a member of the NSE. I was just a member of one of the committees. Fine, you've been associated with it. You backed it. Fine. And I correct myself. That's not yeah. yeah. Sure, but 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 the other point really is that. Constantly, policies have not gone the last mile. UP has not gone the last mile. And no. I think people who are, who are working on the ground, after some time, who work with the system, advise, come to a stage and then say, the last mile is not done. No, it's not and about the last the mile. Last no, it's, mile, it's, not, it's, need, it's not about the last mile. My, my, my point is, no, my point is not about, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, want, Mr. I just want to channelize this, limited time I want to use it. My point is not about MNREGA, last mile, detailed arguments, which, that's not the, my question is that in June 2011, Congress spokesperson Manish Tiwari, who is now the INB minister, said, and, and, and that, that uh, he hit out at the Anna Hazare group, he called them unelectable, and he said, and I quote Manish Tiwari, Vinod Mehta, if this democracy faces its greatest peril from someone, it is from the tyranny of the unelected and the unelectable. Going by that logic, how electable is the NAC? And why has this logic not applied to them? And is Aruna Roy's resignation proof that Manish Tiwari was right, but he did not talk about the unelectable who were running the government through the NAC? Agnabu. Now, what am I doing on this program? Sir. I mean, I believe that Aruna Roy and the NAC yes. was, was a force for good and is a force for good. For good? And you just have to look at the... Oh, absolutely. It's been a force for good. And this dual power center that you talk about... Yes. It had to exist because the Congress party is center-left. The government is full of free market capitalists. So that's it. And therefore, this is a nice balance between the two. Now, you just look at the record of the NAC. What has it given you? It has given you the biggest landmark legislation in the last 20, 25, 30 years, which is the Right to Information Act. It has given you the Right to Education Act. It has given you Narega 
which all its faults which has worked and most of all as far as the party is concerned it gave them a thumping victory in 2009 with 200 no who cares if the congress party no it's not about the victory of a political party but it's not no, you are you are narrowing the no focus of the debate mr mr no i can no one second, one second. i i have i mr mr mehta i one can't find fault with the ideological moorings of those in the nsc or the fact that they have a right to present their views in the I'm process giving, of law making the fact of the matter I'm is the fact of the matter is an elected government of I'm india elected by the people elected by the people as to count out to the nsc you remember swami wants to rebut you swami swami wants to rebut you no no look which is led by sonia gandhi look swami swami is rebutting vinod mehta the issue is not whether you think the nsc people are nice people or uh, or bad people as you say the question he's saying he's saying vinod mehta is saying good or bad no that is not the that is not the issue we are debating here i would disagree i would disagree partially with him i am saying look at the record okay yes yes i'm looking at the record only after i this i mean i agree right to right to information very good right to education is achieved nothing yeah. the uh, the the food thing is a very is just a bad idea uh, so i have mixed feelings on the nsc but i'm not going into the merits of it should you have a state of affairs where the pers- the government in charge should be making decisions or there is some clique called 10 janpat sometimes advised by something called nsc sometimes advised by ahmed patel sometimes advised by other people outside what you call the normal democratic accountability what should be the right it's a structure they, they, it's a structure it is a wrong it, it is to my mind it's a, a faulty it is a faulty structure well, it's nsc aruna roy took advantage of that fault to push their ideology okay. i don't blame them i mean everybody is entitled to push their thing uh, wait, but wait. in terms of democratic structure wait, wait. to my mind that lacked that that lack probability 13, 13 minutes into this debate nirmala sitaraman and kamal faruk have been come in yeah. therefore i am only allowing a small rebut before i go to the political panelists please yes virod mehta only a small rebut because because you are at log aheads with your old friend swami nathan ayer on this one you know what what is, what is this democratic structure has the nac imposed any kind of policy on of course government? nac is an advisory one minute please please now let me answer nac is an advisory body on legislation and no. social welfare schemes no. it advises no sir then the ball is given to the into the court of the government no sir the legislation is not passed by aruna roy sir legislation is not passed so no 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 sir no sir i i i i beg i beg i beg to disagree i beg to disagree and 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 uh, with with someone of your seniority i will not disagree without fact i take an example as i go to nirmala sitaraman and kamal faruqi with vinod mehta sir small point to vinod may i just small point to vinod small point to vinod it is not whether the nsc on paper was an advisory council it is the nsc which saw itself yeah. as a policy making body yeah, yeah. and i think that's what all the difference is all about yeah. that it saw it perception self suggests all the nsc no 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 suggests how it was located the, in the political the, policy no, no, who, is translated okay the, the kamal faruqi kamal faruqi legislation kamal kamal faruqi kamal faruqi is you know uh, uh, what is swaminathan swaminathan ayer said at the start aruna roy has become a megalomaniac No, I mean. No, no, I never. Okay, I, I wouldn't a, put words in your. You want to take those words okay. back? You can no, right okay. now. Okay, there's a touch of megalomania. There's a touch. Okay, yes. you start, made it slightly yes. more subtle. Definitely. But the boot point is this: that the feeling is that the NAC have got spoiled with the amount yeah. of attention yes. and the unelected power that they got yes. directly from Ten Janpat, Kamal Faruqi. No, I don't agree with what Mr. Swami Nathan has said. I absolutely don't agree with him because he has talked about NSC, he has talked about certain personalities and what not. In a in a political system, all these things are very very important. And I totally agree with Vinod Bhai. Yeah. In fact, NSC is only a an advisory board. It's, it's not it's only not. an advisory it's committee. Much more. And it is no, it is in it's fact not. a pre-legislative pre-legislative uh, uh, kind of thing. It has nothing. Uh, it has got no powers. ultimately whatever good work it, it was working in the social sector it was referring it to the government no sir no sir like no. W- w- we have already said about rti and all other things no But sir it, it it is the response it is the responsibility of any political party to look into it no, it is to implement it they had they had committed certain things and they have created this but they, this does not have any no, it's, it's a, authority it's it's what say what so nirmala sitaraman you buy that that is only an advisory body It's only been another advisory yes. body. Nirmala Sitaraman, let me get her in. She hasn't spoken yet. Yes. I just don't <coughs> buy that. 
and I think if you allow me, there are a few points that I'd like to make. It is a completely a political issue. There is no way in which you can look at it academically or otherwise. It was part of the power sharing uh, formula which uh, the Congress and uh, UPA thought they were coming up with a very imaginative way of running the country, which has been complete disaster since the beginning. It, con it, it confined uh, the NI NAC, kept the entire uh, policy and advisory kind of role strictly within itself mm. with hand-picked, hand-chosen people and there was no sense of accountability at all. And the fantastic examples of various different bills and uh, you know, suggestions made for the legislature are going without an understanding of how bills are drafted in the uh, you know, ministries with the permanent executive looking at various different feasibility, financial accountability and so on. So, to have fancy, uh, wonderful ideas of social welfare drafted there and then be sent to the government and the various ministries spend time over it after that to see how it can be tailor-made after it is already designed, cut and stitched by the NAC to accommodate it into the you know, parliamentary democratic setup where everything else is you know, uh, kept within normally. What is wrong with well social the, welfare you know, program? What, and uh, what, Nirvina, what is wrong with social you know, welfare program? Program. Let me just finish off. Let me just finish off. Finally, the important role that they thought they would play was to play the opposition and also play the ruling party through the NAC and therefore had, had it both ways. It cannot work that way.